there, Professor Kaminiuk. Answer the radio. We need to have a little chat. I've got something that may interest you, Igor. Please. Are you... General Kozlov, in the flesh. I need to talk to you. Again. Why should I trust you? I don't need you to trust me. Simply listen and draw your own conclusions. But not here. Red Forest. Next to the train station. Come alone. How do I know it's not a trap? You are important, but not that important, Professor Kaminiuk. Besides, there are much easier ways to get to you. Trust me. I don't like this one bit. I know, Professor, but be there anyway. There won't be another chance. That was Kozlov, right? What did he want? Some FaceTime in the Red Forest. The Red For... You can't go. It's too dangerous. Oh, no shit, it's dangerous. But when did that ever stop you from sending me on a mission? I'll take every precaution. But all Kozlov has to do is pull a gun and blow your brains out. That's a hard no. Well, this is... No. I mean... I've got a strange feeling about this is all. This trip could end very badly for us. Remember to stay on the radio, okay? I'll help you from here any way I can. Sure. Don't worry so much, Olivier. Someone has to. General Kozlov, head of NAR security. A man from the past with a past. I know his kind. They say they want a happy, quiet life, but they are addicted to war and suffering. I feel you still don't know exactly who you can trust. I know you like ample time to think things through, but you need to start making hard choices, even if you don't have all the details. I will. This must be the place. Keep your eyes peeled.
hurts, motherfucker. Get behind Pan now! Call for backup! You're going down! <laughs> Thanks. I guess... I never expected a stalker to come to my aid. I'm looking for someone. Her name is Tatiana. Maybe you or the other soldiers came across her? Sorry. I've never heard of her. And I'm just a grunt, so even if another patrol found her, they wouldn't tell me. I see. All right. I have to go. Good luck. Wait! You saved my life. I have to... Uh, here, take this. It's the least I can do. in Chernobylite crystals, crushed, suffocated. They won't bother you anymore. A tough guy, huh? Well done. Usually these arseholes don't venture this far because of the lurkers. Anyways, thanks. We would have dealt with them ourselves, but I guess you saved us the trouble. Show me your hands. 
I didn't come here to play cops and robbers, Professor Kaminiuk. If I wanted to get rid of you, you'd be making your bed in a lime pit right now. Let's make one thing clear. I can tell the difference between a friend and an enemy. Are you certain of that, Kaminiuk? There's something you need to see. There's a helipad with an abandoned helicopter next to the railroad. Go there. Find the button that powers it up and press it. What's that supposed to do? Blow me to bits? No. No harm will come to you. Please, indulge me. Then come back and we will talk again. attractive prospect, but I have to get to the bottom of this. I'm at the helicopter. Koslov wasn't lying about that, at least. So you think you can trust him now? You can still back out, you know. Come back and we'll hunt this uh. bastard down together. an underground bunker beneath the helipad. Don't go in there. Please. Let's regroup and we can figure out what to do next. I'll let you know what I find. Well, this is getting interesting. Surveillance equipment. Can't be Soviet. It looks cutting edge. Someone's keeping tabs on me in our little warehouse operation. They've got everything here. My exact words, my plans. But how? Is the place bugged? Olivier, Olivier, come in. Where did you go? I thought I lost you for a second there, buddy. I found a bunch of surveillance hardware in the bunker. It must be an old Soviet facility. I wouldn't worry about it. That's not all. I also found intel about me and our mission. Someone is listening to everything we say in the warehouse. Are you certain? Maybe it's just old intel the KGB gathered on you. No, no way. The equipment looks brand new and, goddammit, Olivier, someone's been tracking our every step. We need to talk. I'll come back soon. You've seen it. I can see it in your eyes. What do you think? That's what I should be asking you. Are you spying on us? My dear professor, you have a brilliant mind for science. But reading people is not your strong suit. No, I'm not spying on you. That is the hidey hole of a rogue operative. To be honest, I only recently discovered it. I'm not sure who he's working for, but I do know who he is. Yes, General? A military man with connections to a foreign agency. Canadian, perhaps? Why did you show me this? Not out of sympathy for my cause, I assume. You assume correct. I have my own reasons. 
Helping you in this case serves my own interests. I don't know exactly why you're here, Kaminyuk. I'm not entirely sure you know either. You think you know. You have a hunch. Let's say a feeling that you're chasing. You may find it hard to believe, but we're not so different, you and I. We both lost someone. Someone important to us. Someone close. Now we're trying to get that person back. We're all just pieces on a giant chessboard, at the mercy of powerful forces. But much remains unclear, and even a lowly pawn may turn out to be a queen. Enough riddles. You think he's a Canadian? Your best buddy Olivier has been with you the entire time. He's the only person with access to you 24-7. Think about it. Set your emotions aside and you'll see it's the only logical answer. He's working for someone. NAR, maybe. If that's the case, he reports to someone higher in the chain of command even than me. But the whole operation is off the books. So there's definitely something unusual here. Otherwise, I would be the one to handle it. Bullshit. You're either lying to me or coming up with answers that are convenient for you. How do you know he's Canadian? Does his spy codebook have a fucking maple leaf on the cover? Make jokes if you must, Professor. But think calmly on the problem, and you will realize I am telling you the truth. Treat this information about Olivier as an olive branch of sorts. Do you think I enjoy playing the evil Colonel Kurtz in this jungle? No, I do not. I came here believing this would be the last assignment of my career. That working in the private sector would allow me to retire someplace nice with my nephew. Bieb. I'm his only remaining kin. My brother, his father, died in Chechnya. Instead, I've become entangled in a questionable business run by greedy corporate rats and their shady scientist stooges with a god complex. When they sensed I was unhappy, that I might leave, they took Gleb. Hid him from me as part of a mysterious safety protocol. In reality, he's a hostage. Am I supposed to feel sorry for you? No, not for me. I've done things I'm not proud of. But Gleb, he could grow up to be a decent man. Help me find him, and I will help you find what you're looking for. Who you're looking for. This can't be a coincidence. There was a little kid, about ten years old. What? You'd better tell me what you know, or this conversation won't continue in such a polite manner. It seems a shred of human decency can be found even in the very nest of evil. Tell the man his nephew is in the village. He's still a servant of the Rat King, but maybe this will soften his black heart. A real hunter doesn't kill cubs. Tell Kozlov he can pick his kiddo up from the village, but I'm still coming after him. I don't know if you believe in coincidence, but I know where Glib is. What? If you know something, you'd better... Easy, General. He's okay. I came across him in an old bunker and freed him. He was being kept... I don't need all the details right now. Where is Gleb? I sent him to the Samrachel village. Matvey and his people are taking care of him. Igor, you truly are a ray of light in all this darkness. I'm proud to have you as my sidekick in the war against the Rat King. And proud of myself for making such a wise decision. I hope you're not playing games with me, Kaminyuk. But you don't strike me as the kind of man who'd do that. Thank you. Your sense of honor humbles me. It is a rare quality these days. This is where we part ways. I hope we don't run into each other again in... less favorable circumstances. I wish I could, but it's not that easy. Like I told you before, we're all pieces on the chessboard. I plan to play my part to the best of my abilities. And I know you will too. Best of luck, Professor Kaminyuk.
I'll get straight to the point, Olivier. Kozlov showed me your hidden spy bunker. Why would you do that? Why did you betray me? Whoa. Please don't tell me you believed a word of what he said. That man's a liar through and through. Every general is. And this one's old school GRU. Well, well. Who'd have thought? Our soldier boy is a fucking rat. Just shoot him already. I'm tired of his squeaking. What's this? A rat? I'll bet a buck he's a dead rat now. You backstabbing rat. You have ten seconds to explain yourself. What in God's name are you talking about? I've been to your little spy den. You've been working against me this whole time. Admit it. I know it seems that way sometimes, but the world doesn't actually revolve around you, Igor. Can the pretentious bullshit and just say it. I've got my own mission here, and it doesn't concern you. Not directly. But my goals don't conflict with you finding Tatiana. I've been keeping an eye on you since the beginning. But it's because I'm on your side, Igor. No, I can't believe it, Olivier. Believe what you want. I never did anything to harm you or the mission. I'll let you stay because you're still useful to me. But we're not buddies anymore. This is nothing but a business transaction now. You're making the right call. We'll find your Tatiana yet. You'll see. Everyone, it's time to hit the power plant. We all know it's not going to be easy. We tried before, and not everyone made it. But this time we're smarter and better prepared. I know we can do this. We have to do this. It's the only way we can find Tachana and end NAR. Mousy, you're talking about striking at the heart of the Rat King. But have you learned everything possible about his plans? I have evidence that NAR was conducting Chernobylite experiments back in the 90s. Tachana and her baby were two of their subjects. With the rate at which their technology is progressing, soon nothing will be able to stop them. We must act now. What about that black mask-wearing motherfucker? Have you identified him? His name is Boris Glukov. He, Tachana and I were close friends until he betrayed us. He helped the KGB gather evidence against Tatyana, then continued to work for NAR after my accident. He experimented on himself with Chernobylite and ended up with great power. He's strong, one of the strongest, but we can beat him, together. Do you know what NAR is actually doing at the power plant? Why is it so important? And what does it have to do with Tatiana? NAR wants to create a permanent wormhole to the Chernobylite world and get to its source. Tatiana's abilities are needed to support the space-time bridge. It's hard to know what happens if they succeed. But what they're doing is unbelievably risky. They could unleash something horrific on this world, or become unstoppable themselves. But we're never going to know the outcome. Because we're going to stop them. I like the pep talk, Professor. I think you even gave me a bit of a job. But do we have the right tools for the job? Yes, we do. We've got everything we need to infiltrate the power plant. This is much bigger than anything any of us has done before. If you want to back out, 
This is your chance. One organization holding this much power is against everything I believe in. And besides, this is personal for me. Count me in. You know how I feel. The Red King must be stopped at all costs, Mousy. I'm in. I started out doing this for a paycheck. But I'm going to end it for my brother in arms. For Anton. Let's do this. Whatever it takes to protect my people and drive NAR out, I'm on board. Oh, you think I'm gonna back out now and miss the best part? Fuck no! I'm with you, Igor. I appreciate your trust. We can't count on the element of surprise, but we know enough about NAR's vulnerabilities to make this work. Time and again, NAR has shown they would rather capture than kill me. We can use this to our advantage. We'll dress somebody up as an NAR officer, escorting a prisoner. Me. That's our ticket inside. We have two NAR uniforms, both male. Any takers? I'll do it. I have no problem posing as an NAR officer. My hand is still giving me trouble, but I can deal with it. You should take someone who can keep his cool when things go sideways, as they inevitably do. Trust me on that. You're not seriously thinking about going without me? I'm a blast at parties! Ask anyone! All right, we still have one more uniform. Any takers? NAR must have upgraded its digital defense perimeter and surveillance system by now. A skillful hacker should be able to at least temporarily disable them. I'm your man, Mousy. The great rat catcher has blessed me with a knack for that kind of thing. Electronics, surveillance, computers. There's no one better than me. I wouldn't call myself a black hat, but I know enough. As long as we don't get into serious stuff, I should do fine. I need someone to cover our asses in case we end up in the shit. Someone who can take down a target from a distance, or at least create a diversion. Firearms are my preferred method of solving problems, but I can definitely distract them. My shooting's impaired since I injured my hand, but I can manage. What's there to consider? I'm your gal, Igor. Last but not least, a spy. I want someone to monitor NAR activities and keep us informed about their moves. I've been watching these assholes fight the reflection for years. I know how they think. I'm your guy. I know the power plant like a boy knows the woods behind his house. Let me take care of it. Does everyone know what to do? Last chance to reconsider. This is it, my love. The last stretch. You've been through so much for me. Make sure you're ready, because it will take everything you have. Your wits, your strength, your plan, your companion's loyalty, everything. Good luck, my love. This is it. Today's the day. Whatever happens. Everything sorted, guys? Can we start our prisoner escort up? All right. Can't wait to meet your girlfriend, Igor. If the uniform doesn't get us in, we have one more ace up our sleeve. Their friend enemy password. They say, we quell the storm. And we reply, and ride the thunder. Remember it. Before we enter the lion's den, I need to triple check everything is ready. How's my techie? Have you logged into their system? I'm in, Mousy. What do you need me to do? Overload their systems? Bypass security? You ask and I'll do it. But don't be rash. Once we get started, it's only a matter of time before they kick me out again. Spy check. How are my eyes and ears? 
eyes are bright and my ears are wide open. I got the plans and codes up and I can hear those boring fuckers chatter like they were sitting in my lap. No worries, Igor. With me on your side, this will be like walking to the grocery store. Sniper, are you in position? Have you got eyes on? I'm all set, Igor, and I feel good. This is just like my hunting days. I could shoot the fly off your lapel. There are a few sentries outside the gate. That's obstacle number one. Taking them out quickly is certainly an option. And with the silencer, I should be able to keep my position. It's your call, Igor. Better use the side passage for now. You can always kill them on your way out. <laughs> Just be cool and they'll fall for it. No army in the world puts their best men on sentry duty. Your plan sounds reasonable, Mikhail. Do it. That's not easy to find, but because you wisely asked for my help, you'll be on the other side in no time. These assholes won't see a thing. So far, so good. But it's getting harder now. NAR's upgraded some of the old security features. The electronics are the least of your worries. Nobody said anything about this exposed courtyard. You stand out like a signal flare at the funeral, Igor. Be extra careful. Security checkpoint. What used to be a radiation detector is now a biometric scanner. Clever. I already found the right database. I'll upload your biometric data, and you can walk right through. I can't get a line of sight on all of them. Maybe I should target those fuel tanks on the far side of the gates. That'll keep them distracted long enough for you to slip past. But if we do that, I'll have to fall back from this position. Those NAR security systems can be broken by someone with enough know-how. Those IT wankers probably spent their upgrade budget on porn hub premium content. I don't mind taking a gamble, but a fancy uniform isn't going to fake out a biometric scanner. All right, Olga. Do it. New Year's came early this year, boys. For your help. Be careful. The entrance should be very close. It's a large metal door to the tech access corridor. Nothing I can't handle. Remember the charges I prepared for breaching security doors. Powerful, but quiet. Keep your hand down, Igor. There's a fucking sniper on the building above you. Stop yelling. How do you know? Picked it up on the radio. They haven't made you yet, but if you trigger the alarm, they'll come down on you like a swarm of Katyushas. Damn. 
If I force the lock, it'll trigger the alarm. This will be tough. I can try to remotely unlock the door without tripping the alarm, but no guarantees. You'll have to move very quickly, Mousy. The lock is wired to the alarm system, but Sashko's charges will destroy both the lock and the trigger mechanism. I should be fine. Charge is armed. Stay back. We made it inside. We're safe, at least for now. These tunnels just about make a beeline to the... What the fuck? The electronics are sizzling as if they're going to explode. That's to be expected, Mousy. The power plant's electrical system is antiquated, falling apart. If you feel you're trying to wait for short circuit of power... The water is electric. I have access to the circuit board. Perhaps I can cut power to the nearest corridor. Have you been listening, Mousy? I can turn off the entire sector remotely, no problem. I'll only leave the light on at your location. Tarakan, I like your thinking. Today, the darkness is our friend, Mousy. You're completely now safe. We're getting close to the reactor floor. I think we managed to dodge the main security detail. As long as we maintain our cover, we should be good. Step very fucking lightly now, Igor. The place is swarming with those cocksuckers. NAR's beefed up security. I'm in the Golden Corridor. It looks like NAR beefed up security after our little escapade. Not unexpected. Time to play our prisoner escort car. If they don't buy it, we will kill them. Let's try the prisoner escort charade. Just act bored. Stop right there. I don't recognize you, soldier. We quell the storm? And rat the thunder. Now step aside. I'm bringing this criminal filth to talk to the high rubs. Okay, go ahead. We need to get past these scientists. The Brainiacs have their own dedicated comms. I can put my fabulous acting skills to work and tell them to fuck off, but it's a two-man job. The great rest catcher has smiled upon you today. I can help. This is fucked. Even if they somehow bought our cover story, who would escort a prisoner to the reactor?
Michael, what are you doing here? This is a restricted area. Ah, oh, shit. Security, we have an intruder on site. Intruder, sound the alarm! You failed. You let your friend down, you let me down. Thanks to your planning, your companion's existence is about to end in this timeline. Sashka! Oh, good lord! Man down! Tarakan, I like your thinking. Sounds good, Mousy. It shouldn't take long to hack the comms. Attention! Nemanja! Achtung! The reactor's about to explode! Run for your lives, everyone! What kind of nonsense is this? The reactor cannot ex- Fuck it, Anatoly. A break is a break. These old ventilation ducts will take me straight to the Ark. What the hell is this? Was it here before? Looks like some sci-fi fucking movie prop. The door is trapped. Touch it, and I'll spend my last moments on Earth convulsing on the dirty floor. This door wasn't supposed to be here. Mousy, the ventilation duct should not be secured. The Red King is watching and waiting. I can feel it. Wait, Igor! Remember the map you borrowed from that fucker Semenov? It shows another way in. Guess it was worth it in the end, huh? Your plan sounds reasonable, Mikhail. Do it. The doors are behind you, Igor. Cut through the crap on the other side, and you'll find a nice, fat ventilation duct. Climb up in there, and it'll take you straight to the Ark. Are you seeing those creatures? I hope the bars hold. I might be able to open the gate from this panel, but there's a chance I'll release the things in those cages as well. So this is the heart of darkness. Just as menacing as I imagined it to be. I will gladly burn it all to the ground. The NAR will track me down afterwards, but I don't care. I have reached my destination, Igor. This place is one big fucking trap and totally off grid. The only way to open it from where you are is to crash the whole system. Unless you have some explosives. The Ark is just outside. Tarakan, I like your thinking. Behold, Mousy. In a brief moment, everything will shut down and the door open to you. This has been the adventure of a lifetime. Thank you, Igor. 
now you must face the Rat King's ultimate secret alone. Looks like we'll have to fight no. our way out. The great rat catcher is calling me. It's all up to you now, my boy. These guys are the last thing standing between me and Tatiana. I can't back down now. I'll fight my way in if I have to. Oh no, this sucks big time balls. I wish we had someone inside who could get those assholes to look the other way. Attention all units. What the? This is General Koslov speaking. All troops, stand down and evacuate the building immediately. That is a direct order. Kozlov? He was silent for so long. I thought he was dead. Don't keep the general waiting. Outside, now. Hi, Igor. Bieb says hello. And also goodbye. Kozlov? My nephew told me what you did for him. He asked me to return the favor. I've always had a soft spot for that boy, so... This is your lucky day. Me and Glea believe in this place for good. We're going to disappear where NAR can't ever find us. I would advise you to do the same, but I know you won't listen. Good luck, Igor. May you find whatever it is you're looking for. Thanks. And good luck to you both. Everyone, wait here and watch the perimeter. I have to do this alone. Tatiana! Finally! Igor, my love. My child. It's been so very long. But it's finally you. It has to be you. You know it in your heart, my love. I've been calling out to you for all these years, and you answered. But... how? You shouldn't be here. It's a mistake. You'll only bring great misery on us all, my poor little boy. All of us together, finally. Release me, my love. Free me. What did you call me? I don't understand. What can I do? There's nothing you can do. You have to end this. Both of us. We were a mistake. An abomination. Close the portal. Destroy the connection. What connection? The connection is the strongest force in the universe. It cannot be destroyed. It has to be completed. It is our destiny. Go to the reactor. Find it, my love. It is waiting for you. Find what? No more waiting. Please, can't you just let me die? I can't take any more. Tanya? Go. Die. Fade. Portal. Tatiana, are you still there? Boris, help. Die. Igor. I don't understand. Oh, fuck. Reactor. Chernobylite. Well, what do I do? Oh, fuck, I need to figure this out! Hi, Igor. Happy to see me. Olivier, what are you doing? Do you really need to ask? Did you think I was an idiot right from the beginning? Put the gun down. Whatever it is, we can work it out. You are such an asshole. I've been helping you all this time. I made sacrifices. I lost my best friend just to help you find this dear old lady of yours. Olivier, please. Not once, not fucking once, did you offer to help me. It was always about you. Semenov was right after all, every word. Semenov? What's he got to do with... wait. Yes, I was working for Semenov. He hired me to keep tabs on you. 
It went pretty well until your black mask buddy went off piece and killed Anton. But Semenov, why would you work for that lunatic? What could he possibly offer? Oh, I don't know. Maybe a chance to change what cannot be changed. To go back in time and save my squad? But that's crazy. Crazy, sure. Is it any crazier than going for an interdimensional walk in a tunnel through space-time? I'm not saying it's impossible, but... But helping me was never on your agenda, was it? I should have seen it sooner. Besides, you're not the only one experiencing strange fucking things, you know. I keep having these dreams where I die. I wake up and I live again. I see our friends being killed because of your screw-ups. Then it's a new day and everything's normal again. It's motherfucking Groundhog Day in hell. What do you have to say to that? I don't know what to tell you. You're right. I just never thought anyone else would see it. I thought it was only me. Sure, sure. Semenov isn't the one with the Messiah complex. You are. But today the Messiah descends from the clouds and helps his companions, right? Like I said, it's not impossible. But this is neither the time nor the place. Not good enough, Igor. I'm serious. I'm serious too. We don't know what's behind that door. Semenov wanted me here for a reason, and it wasn't to destroy Chernobylite. So I promise you, once we see this through, I'll do everything in my power to help... Say it. To save my team. To save your team. Okay. That's good enough for me. I'm glad we understand each other. All right, I'll be back. Keep an eye on Tanya. Sure. I just hope you don't screw things up and get us all killed. Again. I'm tired of this carousel of madness. your time, Igor. Cut the crap. It's time you gave me some answers. Yes, we'll get to that. But since this is our last meeting, I want to ask you a question first. Fine. Just make it quick. What do you really hope to achieve, Igor? Isn't that obvious? I want to save Tatiana. You may find this surprising, but our goals are actually aligned. How's that? We were both going after the same thing, but this whole time we've been chasing someone else's agenda without knowing it. Chernobylite's agenda. Come on, man. I've come too far to be fed a line of bullshit. Let's start from the beginning. Do you know who I am? I sure do, Boris. You were my closest friend until you decided to betray me. To take Tachana from me. Boris is dead. I killed him on that fateful night. April 26, 1986. And took his identity. Good riddance. He was a treacherous piece of shit. You took his? Why? The more important question, the question you somehow failed to ask yourself all this time is... Who are you? Because you're not Professor Igor Kiminyuk. You never were. I am Igor Kiminyuk. I only changed my name to protect you and your mother. Protect me? How? By trying to kill me at every turn? If I wanted to kill you, I would have done it the first time we met at the power plant. Will you quit talking in fucking riddles? The truth is hard to swallow, I know. It was hard for me, too. You are me. Tachana isn't your fiance. She's mine. Everything you know about her, everything you remember, none of it is yours. You're living someone else's life. My life. You are my clone, sort of. You got my body, my brain, my skills, 
And most importantly, my memories from before the Chernobyl disaster. What are you saying? How is that even possible? Tatiana was sterile. That was our personal tragedy. But when Semenov imprisoned her after the Duka fiasco, she fell pregnant. At first, I thought Boris was the father, and I was angry with her. But that was another of Semenov's lies. He needed me to stay on the project and study Chernobylite. So he injected Tanya with the nano solution. What happened next was, I don't know what to call it, an immaculate conception. She gave birth to a boy, you. You grew much more quickly than other kids, but your mind didn't seem to follow. It was different somehow. The Chernobylite no doubt affected you in unpredictable ways. I never really considered you my son. You scared the shit out of me. I didn't know what to do with you. But it was obvious that Semenov would incorporate you into his experiments. Or maybe cut you open and rummage around inside. Until one night, Tanya, your mother, communicated with me telepathically, even though her body was in a coma. She pleaded with me to release you into the woods. And that's what I did. You're saying Tatiana's child, who you released in the woods in 1990? But that's impossible. Impossible! I don't remember any of this. Of course you don't. You looked like a teenager that had the mind of a small child. I remember giving you a sweater that Tatiana knitted for me. The night was so cold. It had my name on it. The sweater? I had it in the camp. I was imprisoned and... Yes, it could have been a trigger. Your mind somehow began to rebuild itself. Why in my image? I can only guess. Perhaps you were constructed from Tatiana's desires, from her expectations of a child. Funny, how I called it pseudoscience. I suspect the process was somehow facilitated by the Chernobylite. But she's been calling me this whole time. She wanted me here. I'm afraid you were bamboozled, my poor boy. We all were. It wasn't Tanya who called you here, but it. Chernobylite? But the images, the voices. They felt so real, I know. Your mother was your biggest weakness, and the entity exploited that. It wanted you here. It has plans for you, you see. And I cannot allow it to succeed. Someone sent me a photo of Tatjana and the piece of Chernobylite. Those weren't hallucinations. They were real. I couldn't have constructed my portal gun without them. Oh, that. It was that bastard Semenov, of course. He wanted to bring you here as well. He never got over it when you vanished. Not that it matters now. I really hoped you would stay away. But it's too late now. I can't allow you to interact with the Entity in any way. Only one of us is leaving this room alive. Wait, can't we talk it over? We just did. Goodbye, son. Igor. I wish there was another way. Oh, 
pleasure, but it has to be done. Another way. Same for you. force field to defeat you. I told you to watch Tanya. How on earth did you get in here? Focus, Igor. Look familiar? Where did you get that from? Where else? I took it from you. From your cold, dead hands, Igor. I... what? Where? When? In a reality where you fucked up, my friend. From one of the many worlds bearing the brunt of your failures. 
Are you saying that you come from a different... that you're from... This is hell. You have no idea. Where are you going? Back to my screwed up world, of course. You know me. I'd prefer to die fighting. Wait! Don't waste the chance I've given you, Igor. Finish the job. Son, close the portal, cut the connection, deny this thing away into our world. Do it now. version of me. Go through the portal and face this thing. Undo the harm we both caused Tanya. No, do not do this. Kill me. Just kill me, please. Finish it. Adrenaline would have saved my ass. Why didn't you give it to me, you cheap My life fuck? was in your hands, and you let me we die. We were old timer. I always had your Taking back. care of us Why was didn't your you job. Have mine? You let me die. You the failed. The eulogy you gave at my funeral was awful. I trusted you. Rip. You were supposed to save us all. Sleep you nightmares. killed Kostya, you motherfucker. My Kostya. Why? Why did you betray me, Mousy? After everything I've done for you, you chose it. Executing an unarmed prisoner. Oh, this is impossible. I expected more from These you, Professor Gamini. These things have happened. I fixed them. At least some of them. You're wrong. Did you think meddling with space-time wouldn't have consequences? All of this, every bit of it, happened. But how? I was going back through the wormholes. I was fixing everything. There is no time travel, the way your friend Olivier understands it. You can never change what's already occurred, because every change creates its own space-time continuum. And time only moves in one direction. Entropy. Every time you make or unmake a decision, you twist an entire dimension. It's because you are a part of me, made from the same multi-dimensional stuff. But... I just wanted to save Tatiana. Yes, your mother. And along the way, you destroyed countless lives across dozens of dimensions. All because of animal body chemistry. Because of the human need to connect with your progenitor. So, here I am. I am your real mother. What are you? Chernobylite? I am God. Bullshit. There is no god. But it's a matter of perspective. To a spider under your boot, you surely are a god. Isn't that so, Igor? Don't. Call me that. I'm not... Ah, oh, fuck. 
having a bit of an identity crisis. As a poet once said, the child is the father of the man. The fear that clouds your mind is what makes your situation irreconcilable. Fear? No, I'm not afraid of... The fear of discovering there is nothing at the core of your persona but pure chaos. You simultaneously are and are not you. But don't worry, I am about to reveal the truth. After that, it won't matter anymore. What do you want from me? Have you ever wondered why, despite your technological sophistication, you, people, so insistently pursue self-destruction? Why destroy your own ecosystem? Why you cannot help but slaughter each other and every other species? Why, over and over again, you sacrifice your own future for short-term gain? If you're thinking to catch me off guard with your freshman philosophy insights, you've got another thing coming. People are for the most part selfish assholes. I don't need an alien entity to tell me this. So what's next? Are you going to propose some kind of new world order to save us all? Am I to be your prophet and help you usher in a comic book utopia? I never expected you to be so nihilistic, but I suppose it isn't surprising. No, a new world order isn't enough to save you from yourselves. You are fundamentally flawed. Is that right? And why is that? Again, it's the fear. Fear of your own existence. Fear of anything strange or other. Fear about the future. I can take it all away. I can help you as I've helped many other civilizations before. How? Your kind can only live in the moment. The future is terrifying to you. It makes you do silly, destructive things. <laughs> Surely you can see that now. Become my vessel, and I will purify them of fear and weakness. I will remake mankind in my image, burn away the dross in a firestorm the world has never seen. I must reduce everything to ashes so they can be reborn. That is some insane biblical shit. You're scared this will make you feel less special, less of a hero? This is what being a hero is all about. You went on a quest to heal the world, to find a cure. I am the cure. We can banter words for as long as you want. I have plenty of time. But the result is inevitable. You and I are already connected at the core. You cannot exist without me. Struggling against me will only tire you. It will not in the slightest change the outcome. You are like a fish, endlessly swimming the circumference of a wash basin. You want to jump out, but without me, you simply can't. All your science cannot help you. It's time to set aside this futile struggle. Help yourself and the world. Embrace me. I see. Maybe it's time humanity gets another chance at being its best self. No one will ever know the protagonist's ultimate fate. When he disappeared, a wave of monsters poured into our world through the interdimensional gate, turning Pripyat into a permanent war zone. The inhabitants of the zone gathered everyone who could fight and resist them as best they can. They will never abandon the zone, for it has become their home. They still hope Igor will return one day and help them in their struggle. 
The Chernobylite meanwhile spreads farther into the zone, and the fight grows more desperate with every passing day. Olivier never had the chance to change his own history and prevent the ambush that wiped out his team. Igor's example convinced him to abandon his plan and accept his flawed past. That tragedy, after all, made him the man he was. With time, he made his peace and, in the end, was grateful to be part of something bigger than himself. Once the events in the zone were finished, he sought out Anton's fiance and took care of both her and her daughter. In spite of his flaws, Olivier will always be remembered in the zone for his courage and grit. Mikhail's life was always full of violence. He was the angriest, most obnoxious man Igor had ever known, but he was also unfailingly honest, both with himself and others. Mikhail's thirst to avenge his murdered friends was his main driving force, but working with Igor and the others eventually made him appreciate the kinder aspects of life. In spite of his rough manner and the darkness inside him, Igor came to like the neurotic stalker, and by the end, considered him a true colleague. Mikhail decided to remain in the zone and join the others in protecting their shared home. Sashko had always been the lone wolf and daredevil of the zone. Life had always been harsh for him, and he learned the hard way to rely only on himself. His crusade against NAR began with a desire for closure regarding his brother Ruslan's death, but Igor's quest to find Tatiana was what kept him going until the finish line. After the events in the zone, Sashko decided to go back to Moscow and face the hard truth about his parents' death. Eventually, he would return to Pripyat, which became his second home. Terracon's crusade against the Rat King has reached its conclusion. When he was drawing his final breath, Terracon was calm in his knowledge that the mission was in good hands. It was now up to a student and protege, Igor Kimunuk, to defeat the evil lurking in the zone. Terracon wasn't worried. He had prepared the man well, after all. Igor never discovered Terracon's true identity. Was he a madman? A saint? A spy? Perhaps he was all of these. Perhaps none. But one thing is certain. Terracon was a true child of Pripyat, and his restless soul will forever wander its marshes and woods. When all was said and done, Olga's thoughts went to her mother and the Samoshils. She had joined Igor in his mission because she knew what it meant to live with a hole inside you, a hole left by the departed. As a troubled teenager in Minsk, she'd never planned to become a freedom fighter or martyr, but sometimes we encounter the person who will change our destiny at just the right moment. Life is unpredictable that way. Olga decided to continue serving as the huntress and ranger of Pripyat's forests, striking fear into the hearts of anyone who wished harm upon her people. Like so many before him, General Koslov made the wrong choices while chasing a dream of the good life. War taught him about the cruelty and inevitability of loss, leaving him indifferent to human suffering. It was only thanks to his nephew Galib and Igor that Koslo found a serendipitous moment that placed his life on a new trajectory. He realized that some victories come at too great a cost. Koslo left NAR at just the right time and lived out his days in quiet contemplation, somewhere far beyond their nefarious grasp. Semenov's ambitions and neuroses eventually got him killed. 
He was a brilliant scientist, but could never come to terms with the collapse of the Soviet Union. Though not a devout communist, Semenov could not stomach the chaotic aftermath, for it reflected the emptiness of his own heart. And so he chased his green Chernobylite dream, hoping his experiments would usher in a new world order. In reality, what he sought was to fill the gaping void in his own soul. In the end, everything he thought he had achieved disintegrated into nothing. He died, and NAR dissolved, most of its mercenaries wiped out by either the shadows or the Samoshiels. All that remains of NAR in the zone are the empty barracks and derelict labs, stark reminders of a misguided ambition based on human misery. Faced with staggering losses, the shareholders halted all funding, 